by anyone's reckoning, this is an unlikely fashion accessory. Yet, despite a set square shape with the aerodynamic qualities of a semi-detached house, that is exactly what this G-Class has become. This modern era version is still known by brand loyalists as a W463 series model, but it's very different to earlier Jolanda Wagens that shared that classic designation. The completely new body being 53 millimeters longer, 64 mils wider and 15 millimeters taller than before and built of different grades of steel with aluminium now adopted for the wings, the bonnet and the doors. As ever though, it's still handcrafted for Mercedes by Magna Steyr in Graz, Austria, each G taking over 140 hours to produce. An incredible amount of effort has gone into preserving the style and feel of the original, disguising the fact that only three parts have been carried over. The giant spare wheel cover bolted to the tailgate, uh, the headlamp washers and the classic push-button door handles. Other elements look the same, but they've been completely re-engineered. Uh, the design team spent ages, for example, perfecting the click-snap bolt action sound of the central locking so that that replicated the original. And rumour has it that over 5 million euros were spent getting these classic hippopotamus nostril front indicators to conform to modern safety standards. Now they now retract into the bodywork in an accident. Uh, there's also plenty else that looks the same but isn't. Uh, this military style upright flat windscreen, for example, it's embellished by a signature from Gottlieb Daimler in the bottom right hand corner. And this time it's raked by a further degree. And the round headlights, uh, which now gain full LED beams, or as in this case, multi beam LED technology, which adapts them to the road and to other road users. The grille's been subtly redesigned too. It features horizontal slats with the G350D and vertical ones with this G63 petrol variant. Move to the side and the classic cues continue. The waistline rubbing strip punctuated by the chunky door handles, the old style protruding door hinges, even the rain gutter has been retained. Look closely though and you realize that this is now a much more sophisticated product. Uh, the squarical wheel arches and the chunky bumpers seem now to be a more integral part of the design and less like add-on features. And the surface quality and the panel fit is now of a different level, one at last, befitting to the kind of thing you'd expect from a six-figure SUV. Uh, the wheels are larger too. Now our market doesn't bother with anything less than a 20-inch rim size and on request you can specify 21 inches as is the case here with these five twin spokers or even 22-inch alloys. Uh, you might be tempted to think that the rear styling hasn't changed much either, but of course it has. Uh, a Jolanda Wagen without a tailgate mounted spare wheel would look wrong. Uh, this G-Class remains the only large super luxury SUV to retain one, but there's no reason why this appendage should obscure rear vision quite so much. So the rear window, that's been um, widened around it. And new LED tail lamps sit above a revised bumper, which now features vertical styling strips either side of the number plate recess. As usual though, uh, what's rather more important is the stuff that you can't see. Now a rugged ladder frame chassis has been retained but it's been completely redesigned and all that new metalwork has allowed for a huge 55% improvement in torsional rigidity and a 170 kilo weight saving. A G-Wagen still tips the scales at around two and a half tonnes though. Time to take a seat in the cabin. Now these retro door handles remain an acquired taste and when the vault-like door swings open, uh, you're treated to a steep climb up to the seats past shockle proved badging. Now this references the fact that this Jolanda Wagen's development wasn't signed off until it had uh, driven 178 consecutive times up and down the engineering team's rock strewn Schlockel mountain test course. That's a distance of over 6,000 kilometers across a steep, arduous, boulder strewn track that would, well, just defeat just about any other SUV. Right, we're inside. 
you'd certainly know that you were in a new era G-Vug and here, primarily because this modern model features the widescreen cockpit display that we previously seen in all of Mercedes' more conventional large models uh, with a 12.3 inch central command infotainment screen bonded seamlessly to a digital instrument display of the same size. Uh, the analog dials that are offered in continental Europe that some might think uh, more appropriate to G-Varg and Heritage aren't available in our market. Uh, it does seem a touch incongruous to adopt all this modern tech and then slap right next to it this great old-fashioned dash-mounted grab handle. Plus, uh, you might also think correctly that this appendage would rather get in the way of airbag deployment. At further great expense, the airbags have been redesigned to spring out around it. To be honest, there weren't many other characteristic g Wagen interior features that were worth carrying over into this more enlightened era. Uh, the high-mounted chrome finish switches for the three differential locks, perhaps. We've still got those. And as before, there's virtually no distance at all from the dash to the upright windscreen. Um, all of that is very much a part of the old school feel. Uh, now, to build on that, the development team felt the need to reference the exterior in this cabin redesign. So the shape of the round headlights is, for instance, replicated by the circular jet engine style air vents and these little corner dash top speakers, uh, well, they're supposed to reference the squarical shape of those iconic front indicators. Of course, there are things about earlier g bargains that even loyalists might like to consign to the past. Uh, it's no longer necessary to crash your elbows against the doors or intrude with twirling arms into the front passenger's comfort zone when you're performing complex maneuvers. Uh, up front, that larger body has released 68 mils more elbow room and 38 millimeters more shoulder room. And there's 38 millimeters more legroom too. It all makes a lot of difference. Uh, just as significantly, uh, the previous model may have been built to last, but its fixtures and fittings simply weren't appropriate for a six-figure SUV. Now, that's changed and build quality from the Magna Steyr factory. The same plant that screws together the Jaguar's I-Pace is also vastly better. Uh, Mercedes hasn't been afraid to move the gear selector to a column-mounted stalk either. That controller's previous position, low down on the centre console, is now occupied by the usual shiny black Mercedes protuberance uh, which manages all the infotainment needs. Now a rotary dial here uh, swivels, slides and pushes and that's positioned below a higher surface touchpad which uh, allows letters, numbers and special characters to be handwritten. Although in this right hand drive model of course there is the awkwardness of doing that with your left hand. This is your main access control point for the center dash infotainment screen, which is ever on a Mercedes, delivers the usual wondrous graphics and vast resources of the brand's command media setup, which works as usual with Lingotronic voice control, if you can be bothered to try to master that. Uh, particularly nice are the engine, vehicle, and dynamic data screens in the vehicle section, which show real-time readouts as you drive. Uh, in addition, there's all the usual DAB audio infotainment stuff to of course along with 3D mapping and live traffic information plus you can Bluetooth connect in your smartphone or use the Android Auto or Apple CarPlay screen mirroring systems. Um, in addition uh, the command package provides a media segment which will give you a web browser for things like Facebook and also a useful MB apps section. Now this includes weather reports, access to internet radio and a useful local search function that allows you to find anything from a filling station to a fish restaurant, uh, a passenger terminal to a parking space. And did you ever think you'd be able to create an integrated Wi-Fi hotspot in a g wagon Well, you've got one here. Uh, business buyers will also particularly like the command system's in-car office feature. Uh, that's a Mercedes Me Connect service, which allows drivers use of certain office functions directly in the vehicle and access to important data, almost as if they were in their office. 
um, in-car office uses, for example, the locations of calendar entries and automatically transfers those to the car's navigation system. Uh, the user can also dial into a telephone conference on the basis of a calendar entry and then the system will automatically detect the required PIN access code before simultaneously dialing it. All that's needed is an active data connection uh, which actually might be quite difficult to get in the kind of territory that a G-Class is likely to be most at home in. Now, quite a few of the command screen functions are also duplicated onto the TFT instrument binnacle cockpit display and controlled via these uh, neat little smartphone style touch pads on the now much smarter three spoke Napa leather trimmed steering wheel. Uh, the left hand pad controls the infotainment monitor while the right hand one adjusts the readout between the two main dials which on this G63 model includes an AMG display with a boost gauge, uh, temperature readings, a g-force meter and a race circuit lap counter although quite why you'd need that latter feature on any kind of g-class we're not quite sure uh, there is also a design screen which allows you to customize the instrument monitor ahead of you via three settings uh, now the classic and sport layouts give you two virtual dials or you can choose a so-called progressive setup and that focuses on one gauge uh, the bottom part of which can depict a neat safety assistance graphic if required. Uh, with all the options you can set up the right of the instrument monitor to show a rev counter, uh, navigation information, uh, date information or an eco display that helps you to drive more efficiently. What else? Uh, well, you'll like the driving position, even though it is rather out of line with the pedals, mainly because it positions you more commandingly than in any SUV we can think of. Uh, most owners will want the superb leather seats trimmed in this quilted Napa leather, and the G63 gets them in standard active multi-contour form with side bolsters that adapt themselves through the corners. Uh, you can get various bespoke finishes for this area around the infotainment controller at the bottom of the center stack. Um, that trimming also extends forward to cover this uh, lidded cup holder area uh, that rather neatly includes a slot for the vehicle key. There aren't many other areas to put things. Uh, there is a double lidded box with twin USB points and an SD card slot between the seats here and the door bins are reasonably sized but there's nowhere for your sunglasses and the glove box is rather small um, although it does incorporate coin slots and a pen clip. As for all round visibility, well it's never been a G Vargan strong point but there shouldn't be any issues now. Thin front A pillars certainly help your view forwards and those raised indicators act like uh, gunship sighters for when you're parking. Uh, the larger rear window does indeed improve rearward visibility around that huge rear wheel but you still can't see much through it so you're really going to need the surround view camera. Uh, now that is standard providing you don't make the mistake of ordering a G350D variant without the almost essential optional premium equipment line pack. Uh, it's a great setup with various viewing options including two that uh, specifically help you in hitching up that standard tow bar. Okay, let's move rearwards. Uh, you'll notice the need to give the door a good slam. Uh, door shutting is one of the most annoying things about this car. The latches only click shut after a really assertive push and you'll spend the first few weeks of ownership continually asking passengers to re-shut their doors. Now it would have been nice if that could have been improved but Quite a lot else about the rear seat travelling experience in a G-Wagen has been. Uh, we're not going to get carried away though. This is still probably the least space efficient car that we can think of. Uh, sitting back here, you'd never know you were in an SUV that was nearly five metres long, but it is vastly more passenger friendly than it used to be with plentiful headroom and the fresh platform freeing up a massive 150 millimetres more legroom. Uh, Mercedes also references 27 millimetres more shoulder room and 56 mils more elbow room, but the reality once you're inside situ is that there still isn't really room to sit three adults across the back seat which you'd expect there would be in an SUV of this size. Any decent large SUV costing half as much will feel far more accommodating.
At least the central transmission tunnel is notably low, despite the chunky all-wheel traction driveline. Uh, you're looked after with reading lights, seat back pockets, and a fold-down centre armrest with twin cup holders. Uh, and you can specify a couple of rear seat entertainment screens back here if you want to push the boat out a bit for the benefit of back seat folk. Uh, the centre console offers twin little circular vents, replicating the style of those up front uh, above a digital climate readout. Uh, just below this is a pull-out ashtray. That's a curious inclusion in these enlightened times and a rather more useful 5-volt plug-in point. Forget any thoughts of being able to have fold-out third-row seating. You'd need much greater interior space efficiency than this car can provide in order to be able to accommodate that. As it is, there's just about enough space back here for a half reasonably sized boot. Because of the tailgate mounted spare wheel, you have to access it uh, via this inconvenient side hinged arrangement. That's particularly awkward for markets like ours that drive on the left. Once everything's opened up, you'll find 667 litres of space. Uh, now that's not much less than the brand's much cheaper GLS and GLE SUV models will give you, despite the way that this area is pinched by the audio system subwoofer on the left and the fuel tank on the right. Uh, the upright tailgate helps in that regard. There's a low loading lip too, although it's been practically embellished with this easily scratchable chromed strip. A heavy duty rubber mat protects the floor and it's surrounded by four silver tie down points. Uh, there are bag hooks on both sides and on the left there's a netted storage area and a 12 volt point. This long zipped up pouch here at the back holds a rolled up loading net and a ski hatch is provided for longer items. Uh, you really notice the lack of interior space efficiency when you push forward the 6040 split folding backrest though, where something like a Mercedes GLS would give you 2,300 litres of space in that configuration. Uh, G-Class delivers just 1,246 litres and that's way less than a C-Class estate.